Hello, friends of YouTube all over the world. My name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Welcome to my Flying Wheels YouTube channel. If you guys love anything auto-related, you have stumbled upon the right channel. My channel is all about car stuff. Infotainment on cars, car knowledge, car education, car fun, a little bit of everything. I own a car dealership. Today is auction day. I'm gonna take you with me to the auction. A bunch of you guys have requested a new auction video. Well, today I'm going. I don't do it as often in the summer because typically I'm traveling, I do a lot of camping, I do a lot of boating, just beaching, fun stuff that I don't get a lot because we live in New Hampshire, so we only get like two months to go have a lot of fun and nice weather. Well, today it's going to be 88 degrees. I really wanted to take play hooky today and go on my boat, but I didn't. I'm going to the auction. Come along with me. I'm going to take you start to finish. This is going to be detail-oriented, show you what it's like from the second I get there till the second I leave. I have no agenda. No idea what I'm buying today. I can tell you my toys need to be gone. So normally right around August, people are getting rid of their motorcycles, their boats, their toys. So I can scoop them up real cheap, but then I have to store them. If I have them, forget about it. They need to be gone already, or I'm going to be stuck with them, moving them around while I have to plow all winter long until next spring. So I got to dump these cars fast. I really don't know what, like maybe an M5. I'm really feeling an M5. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to get. We'll see. And that's the fun part of going to the auction. I don't really know what I'm going to get. Sometimes I go and just buy what I find is cheap, what I think is a good deal. Sometimes you get burned there. So I gamble and sometimes I win, sometimes I lose. But you can do a calculated gamble by getting there early, looking at all the cars, test driving them for the most part. I mean, first, second gear, reverse, check everything out, plug it in, see if there are any check engine lights, stuff like that. You can't get it up to speed. You can't do a lot, but I can do a little bit. So if you get there early enough, you can do that. You can make a list of the cars you want before you before they run through the lane. And then when they get through the lane, I already know how many accidents, how many owners, a little bit about the car, excuse me, what I want to pay for the car, all these things I should know going into the auction lane. Red light, anything over 10 years old or 100,000 miles is sold red light, meaning as is. It does not mean it's junk. It's just auction policy and almost every auction in the country, over 10 years, over 100,000 miles, it's sold as is. So I'm almost there. We're going to go to the auction. Let's get started. But before I go, a bunch of you guys guessed Chevy Avalanche LS last week. That was what I was driving. I, I try to make it hard and all of you guys always get it. Uh, so the shout outs for the Chevy Avalanche from last week's video will be in my Accurate Integra Type R video coming up next week. So I bring a tow dolly with me. You can see it right there. The tow dolly, I can put my front wheel drive cars on it. I have the straps and everything. And I just tow it back to my shop. Usually my grandfather, Papa Al, comes with me. He'll be here today. So you'll, if you haven't met him already, you'll get to see him today. He drives a car usually. I tow a car usually. And then we come back together and then do it again, depending on how many cars I drive. So that's how I transport my cars back and forth. A bunch of you guys have asked previously. In the past. That's so you'll see it. early in the morning, we have the RVs going through. So we have like pretty decent looking trailers. Nice little RVs coming through, a whole line of buses and trucks. We have sleds and four-wheelers and trailers and motorcycles and side-by-sides. I mean, there's absolutely everything here from a 66 Caddy limo to a 79 Z28 to a 66 Ford Fairlane. So this is a fairly small enough auction that I can just walk the lanes. So I'll walk up and down and I get a chance to look at every single car here. Bigger auctions, you can't really do that. There are so many, I mean, there's 20, 25 lanes at the larger auctions, you can't get a look at everything. So you get a run list and you highlight everything. I usually grab breakfast, go highlight everything I want, and then go look at them based on their lane and run number. Here, I just walk up and down the lanes and see what I like, stop, take a good look at them all, drive them, and then write them down on my list. Check out this custom wrapped 99 RV diesel with the slide outs. Satin blue wrap on an RV, I've never seen that, with flat black Just accents. getting into it, the whole dash is custom made. Custom made, custom fit, dash with an Alpine sub, custom gauges, this looks like custom seats. The whole thing has been redone really, really well. Look at the, the entire kitchen's been redone. You got the nice posters on the wall, walking back, mirrored up everywhere. I think it has a washing machine. And they redid the both bathrooms. Look at this bed. You can play that sexy music while you have your fun time on the bed. Mirrors everywhere. Somebody really did this RV well. It's like a custom RV, which I've never seen before. We have RVs, we have buses, we have tow trucks, flatbeds, box trucks, bigger box trucks, school buses in the back, utility trucks, a little bit of everything at the auction. Cheap Wranglers are plenty. You've seen those videos before. Cheap Wranglers everywhere, always. I'm falling in love yet today, and I think it might have 
15 Mercedes with 45,000 miles. It's gonna be big bucks though. Is it a formatic? You know, this doesn't actually, isn't as, it is formatic. It's 550. This is an amazing car. This is a nice take my kids to school car. Probably more than I want to spend. For my own stuff, I try to stay under 20 grand just because otherwise it ties up way too much money. Plus I'm putting miles on them. Look at that steering wheel. This is an amazing, amazing car. I don't know, we'll see what this goes for. So I can scan this, figure out what it's worth, how many owners, how many accidents, total sunroofs. This car is incredible. So like a lot of my buyers, I guess my values are unrealistic because that's gonna be like 37 grand. I was way off. No matter what market I'm in, Toyota Siennas and Honda Odysseys of all years, mileages, conditions are always a sellable item. Doesn't matter any of the condition of the mileage. I can always sell a Toyota Sienna or an Odyssey. My wife drives one. And to be quite honest, it's the best vehicle we own. It's like the Lexus of minivans. Pretty sure Mark Wahlberg has the same minivan we have. So if you're ever looking to flip some stuff, Odysseys and Siennas are where it's at, but they are huge bucks. And just to explain how it works. So we have today's date, the lane, the run number. So it's running in lane E. It's the 65th car. It's a 2011 with 88,000 miles. That's how you read these things and get the info real quick. Toy season is over, but I'm an absolute glutton for punishment. 04 SL500 with 97,000 miles. I can't help myself. It's like a moth to a flame. That's a little beat up. That makes it a little easier for me to say no, though. Does it start? Let's take a guess. Does it start? Coming to, I don't think so. Not starting, so easy for me to say no to. Thank you, you just made my day by not having to buy this thing. And I mean, toys, I can sell them online if the price is high. The cheap toys, it's not worth selling online, but stuff like this, that's a 2000 with 103. There's a buyer somewhere for it. It's a little beat up though. Headlights off, corner lamps out. Check out the Jeep Wrangler here, 16 with 65,000 miles, all done up. Now, highly illegal because the wheels are sticking out past the fender, so somebody shaved them down to make them illegal. But what's nice is like, these LED light bars were state of the art when they came out, and now they've made them even better. I mean, th those are also illegal, so this Jeep can't even be driven on New Hampshire roads. That light bar's super thin and way cooler than most that I've seen. Underrated car was the Pontiac GTO 6 liter. I think it's an LS2, but it's definitely a 6 liter Corvette engine. Six speed. The car is super fast, but it wasn't wildly popular brand new because it looks like a freaking Pontiac Grand Am. So, or a Grand Prix. So nobody really cared about it. But once they started to realize how much power it was and they stopped making them, they actually got to be more expensive than they were originally. So now they're kind of a collector's item. 99 Boxster with 85,000 miles. That is a total beater. Probably gonna go for too much money. Ooh, I spy a new Raptor. 2017, 13,000 mile Raptor crew cab. But it's an EcoBoost. I know people love this EcoBoost and the Ford GT has the EcoBoost and the Raptor has the EcoBoost and they're supposed to be amazing. But any EcoBoost I've ever owned, which I'm sure is different than this one, has had severe timing chain issues. So one, four, eight, 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 six, eight, 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 eight. Here's something you don't see every day, a 2000 BMW Z3 M road convertible. 2.3 liter, six cylinder, which only has 240 horsepower. And I know in a light car, it's a ton of power, but I would have expected more out of it. 72K. Check out that interior. This is probably a fun little car to drive. And that's really stiff though. Six right now, seven out, 12, seven in, but it's a number three. Yes, no, have a new blood, now eight, now nine. I have an extremely, extremely full lot and a line of cars waiting to get serviced. So today I'm going to be picky. I'm going to hand pick what I want, check for current inspection stickers, check tires, check brakes, everything. I want perfection today. I don't want junk. I don't have time for junk. I don't need junk. So today's good, clean cars. The other thing that's nice too is usually this place is absolutely packed. It isn't. So busy means more people spending more money. Less busy, hopefully we get some deals. Interested in this thing, 66 Cadillac limousine. It just, I don't know what's about it. Check this out. So cool. It even has the window. This is really, really neat. I will do nothing with this, but put a smile on my face at least. 
The original leather is kind of beat up on the driver's seat, but everything else is in great shape. I really like it. Two grand is really, really tempting on this car. I will do nothing with it, but have it in my way, but I still want it. So 2100 for a running, driving 1966 Cadillac limousine is like so tempting for me. I don't know who the heck I'm gonna sell that thing to. I don't know who the, what the heck I'm gonna do with it. It'd be kind of a neat project if I had the time to turn it into like a lowrider car show thing, but I don't have the time for those projects. But 2100 is really, really tempting on that. One more look at it. There you go. I didn't buy it and I should have. Maybe I shouldn't have. Look who I found. You're famous on the internet, you know. Papa oh, yeah. Al is with I'm me. It's my why I enjoy Thursday so much. I get to hang out with you. We get to go get some lunch. I bought a Chevy Corvette, a Ford Fusion Lincoln version. So a Lincoln MKZ and a Jeep Commander. My tow dolly will only tow front wheel drive cars. So... This is what we have to do every single week. We're doing math problems now. So if we put the Lincoln MKZ on the tow dolly on your truck, I can drive the Jeep Commander back and then leave the tow dolly at my house. You drive me back here and I can drive the Corvette for the rest of the day. That works. Sounds good. Good, let's do that. The hardest part of this job is figuring out where all these cars are now. So E23, that Lincoln's gonna come out and the Jeep Commander has to come out. So Charlie 94. So I'll get, you get the Jeep over there, it's the closest walk, and I will get the Lincoln and I'll meet you at the truck. 08, 08 Lincoln MKZ, not a crazy amount of miles. I bought it because it's front wheel drive. It's basically a Ford Fusion that's a little nicer. It'll be a cheap car. I didn't pay a ton of money for it, I forget what I paid. That's the problem with coming here. I, I raised my hands so often that I actually forget what I paid for everything today. I can tell you I paid like, I spent like 14 grand today, which isn't that bad. I mean, I'll leave usually here spending 40 and 50 thousand dollars in a day, which is crazy. But luckily, it's the end of the month. I have to pay some bills, so I didn't spend all my money, which is nice. I'm going to find the Lincoln MKZ. That'll be a cheap little easy car to sell. wasn't wasn't dirty. Had a car inspection sticker. Didn't get to test drive it though because I wasn't expecting on planning on buying a Lincoln MKZ. My grandfather's going to grab the Jeep Commander. We got an 09 Jeep Commander, or an 08 Jeep Commander. That one, I know the seller. He told me of all about it. I didn't get to check that one out either. There's so many cars here. I can't check them all out. But he did tell me it was a good one, so I have a little bit of faith in him, a little bit of trust in him. He told me he needed a wheel bearing. So we'll drive that back. I hope the wheel doesn't fall off. And then I get to come back and drive my Corvette around all day. 08 Lincoln MKZ. Back in 08, when these came out, they were actually really nice. This is what I got. Clean. Clean as can be. The good thing about, like, Lincolns, I mean, now it's a little bit older, but people have a little bit of money, so they usually take care of them. So, this was the Lincoln MKZ. I think I paid, like, I don't know, $1,700, $1,800 for it. Now, the big question. Will it start? Ooh, we got power, and it is on. Now we just have to figure out if it will shift. So far, so good. It's running, it's driving, it's shifting. It's really a freaking gamble when I buy what I don't, what I haven't checked out, but I'm not getting any power to the fan, and it is 90 degrees out, so it's pretty freaking hot in here. I'm sweating off terribly. Back to the Lincoln. I was a little bummed that this was broken. But guess what I found in the cup holder? <laughs> right there. A little bit of glue, a little bit of paint, and the car is perfection. Minus the AC that's not working, and I am sweating freaking balls right now. It is terrible. Here is vehicle number two. Pop out, putting the plate on it. How was it? Winner or loser so far? Front bearings. Front bearings. You told me that. Oh, they told you that? Yeah. Otherwise, everything else okay? Yahoo! 80 years old doing manual labor. Let me do that for you. What are you doing? Vlog entry. We've already stumbled across a problem because my math doesn't make any sense. So we got the tow dolly on the truck, but what I forgot about is I'm gonna still have the Escalade stuck here. So that was pointless. Wisdom from an older generation. Want to explain that again? When you hook up the safety chains. The safety chains. They have to Cross. They have to cross. Why do they have to cross? In case the trailer or the tow dolly should break loose, it drops down and the it chains falls will hold on it up. the cross instead of straight onto the ground. Cross the chains.
All right, here's the one. Here's the one I've been looking forward to all day. Last but not least, the Corvette. Bought a Corvette convertible today. Looking forward to driving it home. So far off to a bad start. Corvette, dead battery. The one that I paid the most for, the one that should be the most fun, the one that should be starting, dead battery. Left up. So I had pointed out this tow dolly and I showed you the Lincoln MKZ and told you how front wheel drive cars go on the tow dolly. I drove like six miles and didn't realize that this Lincoln is all wheel drive, which is catastrophic for a, an all wheel drive system to be pulling with your two front wheels up and your two rear wheels down. So I heard like an awful grinding from behind me, so I stopped and I'm just praying that I didn't destroy something. Now typically, if I have ever, ever done that, it won't allow me to move. The front wheels will move with the rear wheels and that's how I know, like I've made this mistake by accident before, not often, but I have once or twice, and I catch it right away. Like I put a four by four on and I think it's in neutral, like the transfer case is in neutral and it's not, and I feel it right away. So then I stop. This one didn't do any of that, so. Oh, God, I have a reverse at least. I just don't know what kind of damage I did driving six miles on a tow dolly in an all wheel drive car. I hope it didn't ruin anything. 88 degrees today, beautiful, sunny, not a cloud in the sky. I have the issue with the Lincoln and I go to pull it off the trailer and it freaking downpours like monsoon rains for the five minutes it took me to get the car off the trailer. That's how the day is finishing. Now I'm driving the Jeep Commander. The thing's actually really awesome. It's already incredibly clean. It's running great. No lights on on the dash. The thing that blows my mind is, can you guys hear the howling? Can you hear these wheel bearings? I don't I'm gonna put it closer. I hope you can hear. I don't know how somebody can neglect a wheel bearing so long that it sounds like this. It's crazy. And a wheel bearing is so easy to do. But all in all, the Lincoln MKZ, no catastrophic damage, everything's okay. Had just passed inspection last month, and this commander is awesome besides a couple wheel bearings, which are easy. Day's over, day is complete. Thursday is a very, very long, stressful day. I enjoy it because I'm not at my shop all day. I'm out and about, I get to hang out with my grandfather, so it's a good day, but it is super stressful because I'm spending money, I'm looking at cars, I forget what I'm buying. I have to hope that I bought the right car at the right price and that everything's okay. Even if I check them out, I still don't really know what I'm getting. I got the Lincoln MKZ, I got the Commander, which is over there, and I got the Corvette being detailed over there. Corvette's awesome. Couple problems, I'm gonna have a video coming up on that Corvette, because I have had some issues already and I just bought it that I'm finding out. The Commander, awesome. I knew what I was buying ahead of time. And then the Lincoln MKZ, no damage. Luckily, I have no idea how that happened. So, all in all, a good day. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to subscribe for more videos. I'm gonna have a couple videos coming up soon, which is about the Corvette, because that one, there's a story behind it. I am gonna have a video about brand new Jeep Wrangler JLU coming up. JLU, brand new Jeep Wrangler at auction. I don't know why it was there, but that's gonna be a cool one coming up in a couple weeks, maybe a week or so. And the next one is all Escalades. I bought a bunch of Escalades, or I went shopping for a bunch of Escalades. So that video is coming up too soon. So make sure to subscribe, hit the bell so you get more notifications on other videos. And always I appreciate the support. So see you all later. Adios.